The Word of God is the foundation for successful living. Get the Word of God in you and be transformed by the power-packed teaching from the senior pastor, Faith Tabernacle, or Ta, Dr. David Oyedepo. Having brought us this far, you are taking us through. Lord, I pray that everyone will swim in the ocean of their manifestations this year. Yeah. And let this month stand out as a turning point month for everyone. Yeah. Let this month stand out as a turning point month in every life. Yeah. Blessed be your name. In Jesus' precious name. In Jesus' precious name. Amen. Give Jesus a big behind of praise. We start off in our series on what wisdom is this. Um, which is the series we are pursuing this month. And I'd like you to know that anything you expect, you are qualified to experience. This will be a month you will live to remember in your life. From all the testimonies we've been hearing, we know that God is who he says he is. And testimonies are there for us to draw the release of our own desires. The Bible says the testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. Testimonies make wise. It shows you which step to take I haven't had the steps that others took and what came out of it. My prayer is that the wisdom of testimonies will answer for you this month. Amen. My prayer is that the wisdom of testimonies will answer for you this month. Amen. My prayer is that the wisdom of testimonies will answer for you this month. Amen. What wisdom is this from the scripture that a caption in Mark chapter 6 verse 2 what wisdom is this that is given unto him that such mighty works are wrought by his hand what wisdom is this this is not what we are used to this is out of this world what wisdom is this now I'd like to start by first saying there are four kinds of wisdom recognizing scriptures four kinds of wisdom James chapter 3 verse 15 to 17. He said, if you are bitter envy and strive, this wisdom does not come from above, but is earthly and sensual and devilish. Now, that scripture verse suggests that there are four kinds. There is wisdom from above. There is earthly wisdom. There is intellectual wisdom and there is diabolical wisdom or devilish wisdom. So there are four kinds of wisdom. The wisdom from above, divine wisdom. The earthly wisdom, natural wisdom. Sensual wisdom, intellectual wisdom. And then devilish wisdom which is diabolical wisdom the one engaged in by principalities and powers by witches and wizards and um, familiar spirits the occultics that is devilish wisdom he said but the wisdom that's from above is false pure ever say pure the wisdom that's from above is pure it's peaceable is gentle is easily entreated is full of mercy and good fruits without partiality and without hypocrisy is clean it can be taught there is nothing mystical about it it's full of peace his fruits are found in peace and pleasantness. What wisdom is this? So we'll be exploring that wisdom. 
that was on display in Mark chapter 6 verse 2. The wisdom from above was on display in the life of Jesus. And that wisdom was generating mighty works. It was not, that is, there was nothing ordinary about it. It was all out extraordinary. And I want to let you know that's where you are going this month. I said that's where you are going this month. That's where you are going this month. In Job 28, let's see the narrative here. As the scriptures begin to expand on this order of wisdom, beginning from verse 7. There is a path which no found with, and with the vultures eyes have not seen. The lion's webs have not trodden it, nor the fierce lion passed by it. And this path put forth his hand upon the rock, he overturned the mountains by the roots as if they never existed. Now he cut out rivers among the rocks, and his eyes seeth every precious thing. He binded the floors from overflowing, and the thing that is hid bringeth he forth to light. But where shall wisdom be found? Now, the earlier scripture is extolling the characteristics of that wisdom, the makeup of that wisdom the impact of that wisdom now he said where then where can this kind of wisdom be found and where is the place of this kind of understanding verse 12 man not the price thereof neither is it found in the land of the living now that is out of this world come and say out of this world it is not found in the land of the living out of this world one of the top banks in this country visited our campus sometimes back and the first question is which bank is bankrolling these projects and then they said not one he said it's impossible come and say impossible uh, it's out of this world it is not found in the land of the living it's not about the degrees you have or the ones you don't have it's about your connectivity to that virtue which is not found in the land of the living it's not found in the land of the living that wisdom brought me out of any sense or mentality of indebtedness i'm a free man this ministry had an offer of one billion from a bank as forefront facility for the building of Covenant University, and I said to them, sorry, if God can't build it, we will run it. We won't need it. Covenant University is absolutely debt-free. Landmark is riding on the wings of divine supplies. No stress, no pressure. And I can tell you something. Whatever God says to one, he says to all. The only one that had it, that's why he has the result. When the other one hears it, he will have the same result. This month, you are going to hear the sound of wisdom. Neither is it found in the land of the living. So forget about your degrees. They don't count here. Neither is it found in the land of the living. And then verse 13 says, and verse 14, the depth said it is not in me that is the philosophers the deep thinkers they said we've searched it how we can find it and the sea said it is not with me the sea connotes abundance men of substance can't find it so the substance is up today and blows out tomorrow and can't find it anymore they say it's not in me the sea and the depth now look at what it says here it cannot be gotten for gold that's why the sea can't find it the abundance of the sea can't connect with it neither shall silver be weighed for the price of it it cannot be valued with the pride the gold of offer nor the precious onyx nor or the sapphire the gold and the crystal cannot equal it and its exchange shall not be for fine with shall, shall not be for jewels or fine gold no mention shall be made of cora of or of peers for the price of wisdom is above rubies wow 
the greatest asset, that's the meaning, is the greatest asset of life. Its price is far above rubies. The topax of Ethiopia cannot equal it, neither shall it be valued with pure gold. Verse 20. When then cometh this kind of wisdom, and where is the place of this kind of understanding? Saying it is hid from the eyes of all living. It is out of this world. Did you see that verse again? Verse 12 and now verse 21. It is hid from the eyes of all living and kept close from the fowls of the ears. Researchers. Destruction and death say we have had the fame thereof with our eyes, with our ears. It is able to tame destruction and death. Come and say tame. That's why the Bible said, on his right hand is which are on his left hand is long life long life many days they are the products of that wisdom is able to elongate your days riches and honor a crown of glory shall she deliver unto you and an ornament of grace it is the it is there is its worth is unmatchable its worth is unmatchable where then can this wisdom be found and where is the place of this kind of understanding i love the narrative of the holy spirit here now he said god understanded the way thereof and he knows the place thereof did you see that in verse 23 it is only available with god god is the custodian of this kind of wisdom it's not found anywhere else god understandeth the way thereof and he knoweth the place thereof god everybody say god okay now he went on and said for he looketh to the ends of the earth please listen to this biblical parable and seeth under the whole heaven to make the weight for the winds and he weareth the waters by measure when he made a decree for the rain and a way for the lightning of the thunder then did he see it he declared it he prepared it yea he searched it out he decreed he made it he saw it verse 27 and declared it he prepared it and he searched it out and delivered it in a paper form called the bible and unto man he said hey look at it here is it the fear of the lord is your great access to this book and the wisdom of the lord is to depart to depart from evil is understanding the fear of the lord is the gateway to this wisdom and to depart from evil is what enlarges your understanding in this realm is somebody here know what i'm saying isaiah 34 verse 16 let's use scriptures to interpret scriptures check seek ye out of the book of the law and read isaiah 34 verse 16 none of these shall fail neither shall any want are made for my mouth it has spoken it and my spirit it has gathered them so the word is as declared by god and gathered by his spirit can i hear your amen, amen. that's why second peter chapter 1 verse 21 and 22 says no scriptures of any private interpretation he gathered it he declared it he delivered it through human vessels can i hear your amen? amen so there is a kind of wisdom that is not found in the land of the living and that is the kind of wisdom that we are talking about the wisdom from heaven the wisdom from above so we have natural wisdom we have intellectual wisdom we have diabolical wisdom and we have divine wisdom 
And divine wisdom is a wisdom from above. And whatever is from above is above all. So that is the wisdom that is above all other kinds of wisdom. Paul carried that kind of wisdom and Satan said, Jesus, I know. Paul, I know. It's able to silence principalities and powers. Paul said to the intent that now to principalities and powers in heavenly places might be known by the church, the manifold wisdom of God. The manifold wisdom of God dealing with the assault of principalities and powers and messing them up. Jesus, I know. Paul, I know. Destruction and death said, we tried it. We couldn't deal with it. That's how Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego came out of the fiery furnace. And those who threw them there were slain by the spirit of death in the fire. That's how Daniel went to the den of Lyon and came out alive to testify. Destruction and death said, we have had the fame thereof with our ears. That's how three million people went through the Red Sea on the dry land. And then the whole host of Egypt was drowned in the same place. Destruction and death said, we have had the fame thereof with our ears. That's how Paul was torn and dead and dragged out of town. And they were organizing his burial when he stood up by himself. Destruction and death said, we can't handle it. That's not found in school. Destruction and death said, we have had the fame thereof with our ears. Pastor Konla is here today, and then you remember the case of our daughter. Destruction and death took hold of her, and the system was already broken down. But destruction and death said, we have had the fame thereof with our ears. God's wisdom will deal with any deadly situation as if they never existed. Destruction and death said, we've had the fame thereof with our ears. I'm sure... The king was going to destroy all the wise men because of Daniel. The devil saw Daniel, Shadrach, and Meshach, and Abednego as threats to his kingdom in Babylon. So, but the wisdom of God bade them out. What bade them out? The king said, if you don't give me the dream, I will kill all of you because I'm paying you to tell me what I don't know. Now you can't tell me you are dead. The king said, I vow, I'll kill all of you. They said, please hold on a minute. He said, for what? Bring me the sword. I want to kill them. And then wisdom came. And destruction and death gave up. Everyone appointed to death here, I see the spirit of death given up in the name of Jesus. Now, this is very important. This is very important. This is so important that we know what we are looking for. We are not looking for common sense. Common sense guarantees only common results. I said natural wisdom in the first service. It's just something you are born with. You don't need to acquire it. It is resident in you. It is in your nature. So they call it natural. So you want to peace. You don't open your mouth to peace. You want to eat. You don't put the food in your ears. You want to sit down. You don't try to sit down with your head. It's natural. A child takes the breast of the mother and takes it to the mouth, not to the ear. And it's just born. It doesn't know anything. But it's natural in him. It answers to him. It answers to his nature. That's common sense. I'm not talking about intellectual sense. We are talking about the wisdom of God that's able to deal with diabolical forces and dislodge them. Can I hear your amen? amen. If you ask God, your courtly forces in this realm, they know that that man, leave him alone. That he will finish you. You will fly over his house, you are dead. You move around these premises, you are, you are killed. You know, they, they know it. He said, Jesus, I know. Paul, I know. Who are you? This month, the devil will list you. Yeah. Among the people he fears. Yeah. Can I hear your loudest amen? Yeah. Can I hear your loudest amen? Yeah. Now, let me ask you the question. What level of degree in psychology can you use to go through the fiery furnace? Amen? And what kind of PhD and from what kind of university can you use to go through the den of lion and come out speaking grammar? In fact, the more grammar you speak, the more excited the lion becomes. I say, I've not had this level of grammar for a long time. So where do I start eating you from? <laughs> from the mouth, I can silence you. 
I mean, that's to tell you the limitedness of every other kind of wisdom. All the gods of Egypt were drowned in the Red Sea. Diabolical wisdom ended there. All the gods of Egypt, they were drowned. All the charms they carry, they drowned them together. Pharaoh was drowned. His bodyguards were drowned. All the captains of war were drowned. All the weapons of war in Egypt were drowned one day. Diabolical wisdom ended at the Red Sea. But divine wisdom passed through. You are passing through. I said you are passing through. I said you are passing through. I said you are passing through. Please recognize that there is a divine wisdom solution to every human crisis. Say with me, there is a divine wisdom solution. There is a divine wisdom solution to every human crisis. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians 10, 13, there has no temptation taking you but such as is common to man. But God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted beyond what you are able. And in the same temptation, provide a way of escape that you may be able to deal with it. There is a divine wisdom solution to every human crisis. There is a divine wisdom solution to every human crisis. How shall we escape if we neglect so great salvation which at first began to be spoken by the Lord? There is a solution to every human crisis. Divine wisdom can calm the storm, heal the sick, command supernatural supplies, and even raise the dead. Destruction and death said we can't resist authority. There is a Bible wisdom solution to every issue of life. There is a Bible wisdom solution to every issue of life. The Bible I have defined as the answer book of life. The solution bank to human problems. All we need is to set our heart to seek and to search for the answer. The answer is in the book. One of us here testified some years back how that they had some challenges at home, some satanic interferences, and then he heard me say the Bible is the answer book of life and began checking for the answer to that situation from the book of Genesis and went through all the way to Jeremiah and found it there. And that storm was calm. I say great calm. Beautiful family, triumphant family. He found the answer in the answer book of life. She found the answer in the answer book of life. That is a Bible wisdom solution to every issue of life. That's a Bible wisdom solution to every issue of life. All we need is to set our heart to seek and to search for it. Can I hear your amen? What is unique about this wisdom? It is status changing wisdom. They saw Jesus in Mark chapter 6, verse 1 to 5. We have his brothers here and his sisters here with us. Is this not Joseph's son? His status had changed. What wisdom is this? It has changed his status. It is Satan conquering wisdom. I'll give you a mouth and wisdom that none of your adversaries can resist nor gain say. Luke 21 verse 16. It is exploit commanding wisdom. It gets mighty things done. Exploit. It brought Joseph out of the prison and made him a prime minister overnight. Take over, he was told by Pharaoh. It's a nation subduing wisdom. 
it brought Babylon to its knees through the hands of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in Daniel chapter 3. And the whole land came under heaven, under God, overnight. Daniel took over in the land of Babylon by the operation of that wisdom. It's a nation subduing wisdom. It's a supernatural supply commanding wisdom. Jesus himself knew what he would do. John 6 verse 6. It's able to terminate all the needs and lacks of your life and take you off the lack realm forever. He himself knew what he would do. John 6 6. And they had more than enough by the commanding, the supply commanding power of wisdom. So important. This wisdom turns trials to testimonies. Luke 21, verse 13. And it shall turn to you for a testimony. Shall turn to you for a testimony. And it shall turn to you for a testimony. You start from verse 10 down to 15. And he told us what we turn it. My wisdom will turn your trials and challenges of the end time into testimonies. Wisdom. Turning it into testimonies. A young man shared a testimony in the first service. He had a debt of five million, a capital debt of five million in a business, and had a testimony that I shared in one of those three days, uh, three Sunday services, and plugged into it, and then believed everything that was said, and then came that date that he gave to the Lord by the command of the prophet and the man walked up to him and said okay forget about the interest of that uh, loan and then he turned back the same time he said okay forget about the capital it's written off five million it's at the command of supernatural supplies at the command of what it's at the command of supernatural supplies it's at the command of supernatural supplies and your access to financial supplies is the end of all financial stress in your life. Just gain access to it. Be in command of it. And you'll be at rest. It shall turn to you for a testimony. This economic medan will be your season of divine favor. What is unique about this wisdom? It enthrones its beneficiaries. By this wisdom, kings reign and princes decree justice. A crown of glory it delivers to you and an ornament of grace. It enthrones its beneficiaries. You become tops wherever you are. And I think that's where God is taking you to. You believe that? Let me hear your loudest amen. That is where God is taking you to in the name of Jesus. Very quickly, it's one thing to know what you want. It's another thing to know how to get it. Anything you desire from the Lord, there is nothing new under the sun. People already had got it before. And they are all lined up in scriptures. All we need to do is to locate who they are, who have what we are looking for, then see how they got it. And then we are free. He said, don't be slothful. There is a price paid for every promise obtained. Don't be slothful. There's a price paid for every inheritance attained unto. Don't be slothful, but follow us of them who through faith and patience obtain the promises or inherit the promises. If you want to inherit what they inherit, then you better study the steps they took and then you'll be there in no time. God is no respecter of persons. Whatever he does for one, he will do for another. He says, stand ye in the way, Jeremiah 6 verse 16, and see and ask for the old path. We are in the good way. We are in our father's throne and walk in it and you find rest for your souls. But they said, we will not walk therein. Stand and see. Check the steps they took. Take the same steps and you get to the same kind of end result. But they said, no, 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 we are modern people. We don't need that. The truth is this, there is no new generation truth. 
truth is transgenerational truth is the same in all generations there is no new generation truth you are either in touch with this old rugged cross or you are not going to get there how did they get there now there are five people that manifested strange dimensions of divine wisdom in scriptures one is joseph two we have david three we have solomon four we have daniel and five we have paul the apostle and there's this common denominator among all of them to prove that it's a fundamental requirement for your access to divine wisdom so i'm talking about the gateway to divine wisdom what is the gateway to divine wisdom let's look at it from the life of these fellows we saw joseph a victim of hatred and bitterness and he found his way in into potiphar's house as a slave but his relationship with god was maintained in spite of the challenges of his life you know love is as strong as death a boy like joseph should have just said well god where were you when they met all these ugly things on my life i live my life by myself but joseph maintained his relationship with god his affection for god was was jealously guarded and when he got to Potiphar's, wife, uh, to Potiphar's house, he enjoyed divine favor. And Potiphar's wife wanted to knock him down and get him off God. He said, no, Genesis 39 verse 9. How can I do this wicked thing and sin against God? God was still most relevant to him. God was still the darling of his soul in spite of his challenges. And then this young man had the supernatural access to divine wisdom. And we saw it display in chapter 41 of Genesis and verse 38 and 39. Can we find a man such as this is, a man in whom the Spirit of God is? Verse 39, in as much as God has shown you all this, Genesis 41, 39, there is no one as wise and discreet as thou art. His law for God became the gateway to divine wisdom. That was his div the, the, the gateway to divine wisdom for him. Now, let's go over now to the man called David. David was said to be a man after God's own heart. 1 Samuel 13 and verse 14. A man after God's own heart. A man after God's own heart. And a man also that craves for wisdom. Amen. A man after God's own heart. And then we saw it that David behaved himself wisely before Saul. 1 Samuel 18 verses 14 and 15. And when Saul saw that he behaved himself very wisely, he was afraid of him. 1 Samuel 18 and verses 14 and 15. And David behaved himself wisely. Wherefore, when Saul saw that he behaved himself very wisely, he was afraid of him. Come and say divine wisdom. Saul saw divine wisdom at work in David and he was afraid of him. From this month onward, opposition will be afraid of you. The manifestation of divine wisdom will send your opposition into confusion. You believe that? Let me hear your loudest. Amen when he saw he was afraid of him and second samuel chapter 14 verse 20 they define the wisdom of david as the wisdom like the wisdom of angels the wisdom of angels according to the wisdom of an angel of god and to know all things that are in the earth that was david a man after god's own heart had his access to divine wisdom by the love of God born in his heart. Can I hear your amen? amen? God hasn't changed. He's still the same. God hasn't changed. He's still the same. Then we saw it vividly defined in the life of Solomon. And Solomon loved the Lord. Very clear language. There is no inferences here. It's direct. And Solomon loved the Lord. First Kings chapter 3 and verse 3. And Solomon loved the Lord. That was the beginning of his journey into 
divine wisdom. And Solomon loved the Lord. And the king went to prove his love by sacrifice. And appreciation to God. And God said, appear to him in the night. Ask what I shall do for you. He said, give me wisdom. He said, I've given you wisdom. So that no one will compare with you in your time. Hmm? God gave him wisdom through the gateway of the love in his heart. The love of God is your express way into divine wisdom. You can't connect with it without the love of God. Now you see, out of the mouth of two or three witnesses, every truth is confirmed. In Daniel chapter 1 verse 9, Daniel purposed in his heart not to defy himself with the king's rich food. Purpose. Daniel purposed in his heart, verse 8, not to defy himself with the king's rich food. They, in spite of their captivity, they maintain their connectivity with God. They were all captives in the land. They should be mourning and be mourning their situation. But they had a burning love for God in their heart. And the Bible said, as for these four children, verse 17, God gave them wisdom and skill and understanding in all learning. And when they were tested, they were ten times better than all their colleagues. Ten times better than all their colleagues. Verse 18. Ten times better. They stood out. They stood out. Because of their proper positioning with God, they had expressed access to divine wisdom. And that was said more and more in clearer terms in chapter 2 of uh, Daniel, beginning from verse 16 all the way down to 30. We saw Daniel unraveling a mystery that no other source could have unraveled. Daniel said in 27 of that chapter 2, he said, what you have asked, no astrologer, no wise man, no magician can unfold it to you. But there's a God in heaven that reveals secrets. Can I hear you say amen? amen? That was the kind of wisdom that Daniel had access to. He had access to it by a heart for God. Listen to this. It's impossible to assess divine wisdom without a heart for God. Now, number five, we talk about Paul the Apostle. Paul the Apostle said, who shall separate us? What shall separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus? He was a man with a burning heart for God. In Philippians 1 and verse 21, for me to live is Christ and to die is gain. Now, chapter 3 of Philippians verse 7 and 8, he said, I count all things but done for the excellency of the knowledge of God in Christ Jesus. That was Paul the Apostle. Paul said in Galatians 2.20, I'm crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I, but Christ that lives in me. He was a man so lost in God. His heart for God is so matchable. And hear what Peter said. And as for our brother Paul, the wisdom given him, 2 Peter 3.15, is so strong that men twist it to their own destructions. The wisdom given him was so strong and it's clear. And I count that the long sovereign of God, even as our beloved brother Paul also wrote in his epistle, according to the wisdom given unto him as written unto you. He had that divine wisdom. And what am I talking about? He wrote 12 books out of the 20, 66 books of the Bible. 12. One man. 12. Wrote 12 books out of the 66 books of the Bible. One man. And these books went through fire seven times. So after going through fire seven times, 12 of his own came out. Can I hear your amen? amen? Twelve. One man. That's the level of divine wisdom because God's word is God's wisdom imprint. So God channeled twelve of the, his, the, cha the books of his wisdom through one man out of sixty-six. Twelve. Twelve. Because of the level of his love for God, for me to live is Christ and to die is gain. To live is Christ and to die is gain. This is the choice we have to make this month if you must change level. Please understand also that God's wisdom is a living force. So it grows. It grows. It's a living virtue. And so it grows. Growth is one of the fundamental characteristics of living things. It grows. God's wisdom grows 
all the depth both of the wisdom and the knowledge of God. How unsearchable are his ways and his paths are past finding out. Romans 11, 33. All the depth, how unsearchable. So we keep growing in it. God's wisdom grows. And everyone here in the name of Jesus who are changing level this month. I said you are changing level this month. You are changing level this month. Everyone here is changing level this month. If you are one of them, let me hear your loudest amen. Let me hear your loudest amen. Let me hear your loudest amen. amen. What are the proofs of your love for God? Proofs of your love for God includes the following. One, if you love him, you will love his word. Everyone that loves him, loves his word. David, the man after God's own heart, he said, How love I thy law. It is my meditation all the day long. Psalm 119 verse 97. How love I thy law. You can't love him and not love his words. You cannot love him and not love his words. Number two proof of your love for him is your love for his house. Your love for his house. The word says, I was glad when they said to me, come let us go into the house of the Lord. I would rather be a doorkeeper in the house of the Lord than dwell in the tents of wickedness. Psalm 84 verse 14 downwards. Psalm 122 verse 1 to 6. You can't love him and not love his house. You can't love him and not love his kingdom. You know, there are things we say with our mouth and our heart is not there. He said, these people draw near me with their mouth, but their heart is far from me. You can't love him and not love his word. You cannot love him and not love his house. Number three, you cannot love him and not love the brethren. First John chapter 3 verses 14 and 15. If you do not love man whom you have seen, how can you claim to love God whom you cannot see? If your neighbor come asking you for any help and it's in your power to help him, you don't just pray for him and say, be warm. How do I let the love of God in you? But when you are in love of the brethren, it's a proof that you are in love with God. Can I hear your amen? amen. Someone is going through some challenge in your neighborhood. Somebody is going through some stress in your satellite fellowship. Somebody in your workplace is experiencing some challenge and you are in a position to help him. Why not? That is the way to prove and validate the love of God in your life. And then, if you love him, the Bible says you prove the sincerity of your love by your giving. You prove the sincerity of your love by your giving. Second Corinthians 8.8 8. You prove the sincerity of your love by your giving life. God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son. John 3.16 God so loved and God so gave. You can't be in love and not be a giver. So it's not just saying, I love you, Lord. The truth is, where is the proof of the sincerity of your love? You don't toss your Bible away. Sunday this Sunday until next Sunday before you pick it up. That's not love. Do you really love him? My Bible says, listen to this. He said, I has not seen nor he has heard. It has not entered the heart of any man the thing that God has prepared for them that love him. But God has revealed them to us by his spirit, for the spirit of God searches all things, yea, the deep, deep things of God. I'd like you to open to this book of First Corinthians chapter 2, and we'll read it before we begin to round up. Thank you, Jesus. First Corinthians chapter 2, we start from verse 6. Now, 
Let's start from four. And my speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdom, but in demonstration of the spirit and of power, that your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. How be it we speak wisdom among them that are perfect, yet not the wisdom of this world, nor the wisdom of this world that come to naught, but we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery. Even the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the world unto our glory, which none of the princes of this world knew, for had they known it, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. But as it is written, I has not seen nor ear heard, it has not entered into the heart of any man the thing that God has prepared for them. The wisdom that God has reserved for them that love him. And this wisdom is only, it can only be assessed as revealed. It cannot be acquired. You can only assess it by revelation. He said, God has reserved, but the spirit of, he has revealed to us by his spirit. For his spirit searches all things, yea, the deep things of God, and are accessible by those that love him. God has reserved it for them that love him. So if you are not in love, you are not entitled and access. Your access is guaranteed only by your love for God. My prayer today is that everyone in this great service will be so well properly positioned for the month of June to assess this surpassing wisdom. And in the name of Jesus, everything that looks a trial in your life will be turned to a testimony this month. You believe that? Let me hear your loudest amen. Let me hear your loudest amen. Let me hear your loudest amen. In Proverbs 23 and verse 26, he said, My son, give me your heart and let your eyes observe my ways. Until I have your heart, you cannot assess my ways. My son, give me your heart and let your eyes observe my ways. Until I have your heart, you cannot assess my ways. And I can't take your heart from you. You have to offer it by yourself. Behold, I stand at the door of your heart and knock. If you open up, I will come in. If you don't open up, I pass my way. I stand at the door of your heart and I'm knocking, asking, are you interested in giving me your heart? You say, yeah, okay, I'm coming. And when the only wise God comes in, then you become a living wonder. When the only wise the only wise God comes into your life, you become a living wonder among men. The only wise God steps into your life, your crisis is over. Can I hear your loudest amen? amen? My son, give me your heart and let your eyes observe my ways. The truth is this. You cannot enjoy the confidentialities of a man you are not in relationship with. It is the quality of your love for a man that entitles you to his secrets. The wisdom of God are kept with God and they are only released to his lovers. They are only released to his lovers. No matter how much you try to show a blind man something, he cannot see it. He cannot see it. No matter how many books you read, you can't see what is not revealed to you. You can't see it. But when your heart is connected, then the flow cannot be hindered. It's all left to you. There is an answer in the book at all times on all issues for people who care for it. But the fundamental requirement for access is the love of God. I will say this at this point. The hotter your love for God, the greater your access to divine wisdom. The hotter your love for God, the greater your access to divine wisdom. The hotter your love for God, the greater your access to divine wisdom. Natural wisdom, intellectual wisdom can only deliver all other things being equal and they are hardly equal. They are hardly equal. You work hard to succeed, but can you work hard to protect yourself? Somebody woke up in the night, like you read in that testimony, and his hand turned backward. Mm. 
All things are not equal at all times. Most of the times they are not equal at all. They are not equal at all. So it doesn't matter what other kind of wisdom you possess. Without this one, you don't have security. Your security is in this divine wisdom. That's where it is. There is no method to translate a man from a prisoner to a prime minister overnight. No interview, no campaign, no CV, no certificate. Only divine wisdom can do that. Only divine wisdom can do that. How do you, how can captives become captains in the land of their captivity? Say with me, divine wisdom. Do you know these are captives? How can they become rulers? Where are they from? Nobody asks. God is going to daze us in this family this month. Amen. Divine wisdom will bring the best in you to light. Amen. You believe that? Let me hear your loudest. Amen. amen. 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 The best in you is about coming forth. Amen. And that is divine wisdom. That is divine wisdom. Let me conclude at this point by saying this. That God's word is God's wisdom bank. This is the source of divine wisdom. That's where all wise men draw from. He said to Timothy, And from a child thou hast known the holy scriptures, which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith that is in Christ Jesus. Second Timothy chapter 3, verse 15. David said, Thou through thy commandments hast made me wiser than my enemies, for they are ever with me. Psalm 119 and verse 97 and 98. God's word makes wise. God's word makes wise. God's word makes wise. Matthew 7, 24 to 28. Whosoever heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them, I will like him unto a wise man who has built his house upon the rock. Luke eleven forty nine. And the wisdom of God saith. So God's word is God's wisdom packaged in print. So the more committed you are to the word, with your heart in place, the greater your access to divine wisdom. Can I hear your loudest amen? amen. Let me hear your loudest amen. amen. Let me hear your loudest amen. amen. The wisdom of God grows by the word of God actively at work in our lives. The word of God is the catalyst for the wisdom of God in our life. It's impossible to retain divine wisdom without feeding it on the word. Without feeding on the word of God, which is God's wisdom bank for all generations. Can I hear your loudest amen? Amen. Can I hear your loudest amen? amen? There is a Bible wisdom solution to every issue of life. All we need is to set our hearts to seek and to search for it. There's an answer there. He said, you shall seek for me and find me when you shall search for me with all your heart. All your heart. Everyone that asks a sincere question, in scriptures got an answer you will find an answer this month i said you will find an answer this month you will find an answer this month you will find an answer this month think of it the bible says for instance husbands and wife are one flesh is that correct so every time a man says to his wife you are a goat all the man is saying I'm addressing Mrs. Goat because I am Mr. Goat. Very simple. Whatever your wife is, that is who you are. 
every time a woman says this husband is a useless man you are only saying mrs useless is addressing mr useless we are equally useless if you can understand the wisdom of one flesh the crisis in the home will be zero it will be down to what zero no one yet hated his own flesh so every form of hatred of the partners in marriage is a proof of absence of wisdom as it exists but he nourishes it everybody nourishes his body he said when you are at variance with your wife your prayers or with your husband your prayers will be hindered so you can't have prayers answered when the two of you are not one now you can't understand that and still be keeping malice you can't understand that and still be hiding about here and there You'll be clear and open because you want things to go on for 28 months after the lord called me my quest and only desire is lord i need your wisdom it was everyone that asked what is it that you want us to pray about just ask god to give me his wisdom that was why i was searching on the mountain in the valley 28 solid months and when god saw that that was my heart burning desire he said to me i won't like you to go like others have gone I will have hands laid on you so you can be filled with the spirit of wisdom. And I said, who lays this hand on me? He said, I sent for my servant, so and so. He will lay hands on you and you shall be filled with the spirit of wisdom. Friends, if you need to be sincere. What do you really need? You have mistaken intellectual sense for divine wisdom. That's why you are grounded. You have mistaken common sense for divine wisdom. That's why you are living a common life. You need to know that there is a place, there is a a virtue called divine wisdom it holds the answers to all issues including death and destruction the greatest asset of life and it's available to all of us in matthew 11 19 he said it is the heritage of the children of god now hear me the child of a goat possesses the wisdom of a goat true or false the child of a sheep possesses the wisdom of a sheep he doesn't need to go to school to bleed he bleeds naturally. The child of a dog possesses the wisdom of a dog, so he barks naturally. Whether it's a dog in Australia or a dog in China, they, every dog barks. Every dog barks. The child of a man does not need prayers to assess the wisdom of a man. He's born with that natural human wisdom. That's why the Bible said wisdom, divine wisdom, is the heritage of God's children. So if you are a child of God, divine wisdom is your heritage. All you need is to take the step that grants, grants you the access to it. And that step is the love of God in your heart. Can I hear your amen? Yeah. I have said it time and again. You can read all the books I've written, about 60 of them. But you never understand my secret until you discover my heartbeat for God. I love God to madness. All the devils in here know I love God. While in school many years ago, I said to my teacher, who was very upset with me, I said, please don't be upset. I'm a full-time Christian and a part-time student. This is where God has brought a full-time Christian and a part-time student. You can't be full-time with Jesus and not make a full proof of your destiny. You can't be full time with Jesus and not make a full proof of your destiny. You can't be full, you can't have your heart with him my entire being is hooked to god so his light gets across to me naturally i brought nothing to this ministry but divine insight had not one dime saving in fact he told me carry no post no script and greet no man on the way not be around no man resources he told me very clear terms and i declare it then thank god 28 years have come and gone there is no lobbying around any man living or dead, ruling or reigning. Everything in Canaan land is divine wisdom generated. No pressure anywhere. All our ways are ways of pleasantness and all our paths are peace. The same order of grace is what we are contacting this month. Amen. Your business will be expanding and exploding without stress. 
peace will reign supreme in your family without sweat. You will enjoy career breakthroughs like you never could imagine. The students in school, you become a living surprise to everyone around you. Divine wisdom is the heritage of all the children of God. Everyone. Thank God for intellectual sense. We all have some bit of it. Thank God for natural sense. All of us have the same level. Nobody has more common sense than another person. The same. Can't find some people who are now trying to eat and then they are eating through their armpit. <laughs> he said he doesn't have enough common sense. He has enough common sense to know it is to the mouth. And you don't breathe with your eyes. You breathe with your nose. <laughs> you don't close your nose and close and say you want to breathe with your eyes. No. It's all common. It's common to everybody. It's common, common sense. It's common to what? Everybody. It's common to everybody. Intellectual sense is as long as, as much as you desire to acquire. You keep acquiring. But divine wisdom has its source only in God. And it deals with all issues. It deals with what? Intellectual sense can deal with career issues, but it can't deal with diabolical issues. It can't deal with demonic issues. Amen. It can't deal with divine health. It can't deal with the divine protection. It can't deal with accident. It can't deal with robbery attack. It can't deal with ritual attack on people. It can't. But think of divine wisdom. It deals with all issues of life and make a mess of them. Jesus is Lord. If you are in this service this morning and you are not a child of God yet, it's impossible, no matter how long a pet stays in your house, it cannot become a human being. Can it? Neither can it operate human wisdom. No matter how long it stays. No matter how long a man is in church, if he's not born again, he will never assess, be able to assess divine wisdom. No matter how long it stays. We have an elder in Kaduna Church. And they had a dog in the house. That dog has stayed there for 17 years. How many years? And then I asked one day, I said, have you ever bought Christmas dress for this dog? No. I see a bedroom here? No. After 17 years of adventure, he was never mistakenly treated as a man. No matter how long you are in church, until you are a child of God, you cannot assess the wisdom of God. Let's to our feet, everybody. Covenant keeping God, there is no one like you. Sing a few times now. There is no one like you. Alpha and Omega. There is no one like you. Lift up your hands and sing it now. There is no one like you. serve a covenant keeping God. If the love of God in their heart qualify them access to the divine wisdom, then we have access by the same means. Wherever you are this hour, I'd like you to lift up your two hands. Love is not a gift. Love is a choice. Simon, thou son of Bajona, lovest thou me more than this?
Lord, I love you. Set my love on fire by your spirit today. Go ahead and pray that prayer. Lord, I love you. And set my love for you on fire today. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' precious name. Lord, I receive grace for the proofs of love in my life. I'd like you to pray that prayer over your life so that your love for his word, your love for his kingdom, your love for his house, your love for the brethren, and your love as proved by your giving life will be consistent. I mean, I tell you something. You cannot have proofs without the proofs of his love in your life. Eyes have not seen, nor ears had. Hear this. I share this testimony in one minute with you. We were up in church October 3, 1984. And we needed a sum of 3,000 naira. And the leaders met. And I said to the brethren, I said, You know something? If I have this money, God will not appeal to me to give it. But now that we are all at the same level, understand what I'm saying? Because the time is coming when some of us will take off in the air and you start saying, we don't even know what they are using. Let me tell you what I'm using. I'm sold out to God. There were about eight people in that meeting. There were about eight people in that meeting. October 3, 1984. There were about eight people in that meeting. And um, <laughs> it's time to give. I said, man, we should be able to do that among us. It's time to give and then get rid of this uh, uh, issue. And I quickly mentioned that thing to them because I know where the lovers are going. Every genuine God's lover ends up a high flyer. You can't be a true lover of Jesus and not end up a high flyer. It is, you don't need any vote to become a high flyer. You don't need no vote. You don't need no vote from no man. God said to me, he said, you need only my vote to be everything. Created you, to be. you need only my vote to be everything I've created you to be. You need only my, he said, you just win my vote. And then you have won the election. Win my vote and you have won the election. I said, now that we are all at the same level, understand what I'm saying. Because a time is coming. Some of us will take off in the air and you start looking up. We don't even know what they are using. Don't mind them. I said, let me tell you what I'm using. I tell you before it starts happening. I'm sold out to God. And I said, you can't be sold out to God and not stand out in life. You can be sold out to God and not stand out in life. Lord, let the proofs of your love be made manifest consistently in my life. To love your world, to love your house, to love the brethren, and to love giving, to help things going. To invest into my future by my giving life. Go ahead and pray that prayer. Everybody here that loves the Lord. Lord, let the proofs of your love Continue to find consistent expression in my life. Continued expression in my life. Pray that prayer from the depth of your heart. Pray 
pray that prayer from the depth of your heart. It's a new day. In Jesus' precious name. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. If they have to follow you up to read the Bible, follow you up to go to church, you are far from where you are going. Jesus said, follow me and I will make you. He makes only those who follow him, not those they are following up. Those who are following on their own, following willingly, following excitedly. Man, I, I met Jesus 40 years ago. Nobody ran after me. I was running after Jesus 40 years. You can't blame him for blessing me. I run after him in the morning, in the afternoon, in the night. Nobody runs after me. Read your Bible. No. Go to church. No. Love the brethren. No. Give. No. Grace came. May the same grace that will make you tirelessly in pursuit of God rest upon you today. I pray that no force will push you to give up in your pursuit of God. This month is declared your month of divine encounters with divine wisdom. In the name of Jesus. Because wisdom is the heritage of our children and you are one of the children of the Most High God. This month you are changing levels in the school of divine wisdom. That wisdom will calm every st storm in your family. It will calm every storm in your business and career. It will calm every storm in your children's life. It will calm every storm in your health. This month is declared a month of divine encounters with favor. In the name of Jesus. Someone came to Jesus. I've done all that I know. What lack I yet? The one thing you need to break forth to your next dimension of favor and blessings, this month you will contact it. 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 This month is declared your month of answers. It is declared your month of solutions. In the name of Jesus. It is declared your month of answers. It is declared your month of solutions. In the name of Jesus. This month is declared your month of answers. It is declared your month of solutions. In the name of Jesus. I'd like you to be full of expectation this month because no one will be left at the level where he is now by the end of this month. I'd like you to get out of this service today and make a list of questions that must find answers this month. There are questions around your life that you desire an answer to this month. This month will not be over before the answers arrive. The questions on the status of your business, the status of your family, the status of your finance, every question that you desire an answer to, questions regarding your head, questions regarding your life, questions regarding your ministry, whatever questions there are in your life, don't let today pass without making a list of the questions you desire answers to and be committed in finding out the answers. Even though God gave Solomon wisdom, he said, I set my heart to seek and to search. I set my heart, Ecclesiastes 1, verse 13, verse 16, and verse 17. I set my heart to seek and to search. I set my heart to seek and to search. I commune with my heart. I meditated through the things I was finding to locate where the answer actually is. This month is your month. I said, this month is your month. That man said in the testimony when we announced the three days of divine visitations he said he set his heart that this is my time and god visited him that same god will visit you this month 17th of september 83 i will never forget after obeying god and the hands were laid on me 
I knew rest came. You know, divine wisdom gives rest. Huh? There was no war all through the time of Solomon. Every war in your life is ending this month. Yeah. Divine wisdom is the arrestor, arrestor of war. It arrested war in Israel. Throughout, even though God said, the sword shall not depart from the house of David, when divine wisdom landed, the sword departed. Every war against your family, every war against your career, every war against your health, every war against your destiny, they are ending finally this month. 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 You believe that? Let me hear your loudest. Amen. Please don't forget the books recommended for the month. Creating a New Beginning by Bishop David Abioyim. Very powerful material. It will help open you up and stretch your insight on the things to do to move to the next level. Then walking in wisdom. The wisdom that works. And then the winning wisdom. I know you have a lot of these copies on your shelf. The good thing is to have it in your heart. When it's in your heart, then things begin to happen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Lift up those two hands. Give God praise. Give him thanks from the depth of your heart. Give him thanks and praise. In Jesus' precious name. Now go in peace. Everything you desire of God this week, they shall be delivered to you for a testimony. The week is declared a week of answers for you. A week of solutions for your family. A week of breakthroughs in your business and career. You are returning this coming Sunday with your load and bundles of testimonies in your hand. Friday night, the world is waiting to hear your testimonies. In the name of Jesus. No mishap in your family this week. No evil report for you all through the month. This month is declared a month of divine encounters for you. Everyone seeking a miracle job, it is done for you this week. Everyone believing God for their mighty destiny to be established, is going to be established for you this week. God created the world in six days. It will create your miracle home for you this week. Everyone desiring restoration of your battered family, that restoration comes to you this week. This is a week you will live to remember in your life. And so shall it be. In Jesus' precious name. If you have been blessed by this message, we encourage you to join God's fullness at Faith Tabernacle, Canaan Land, Kilometer 10, Idiroko Road, every Sunday in either of the two services at 7 a.m. and 10 a.m. And every Wednesday at the communion service from 5 p.m. to 7 p.m. Or you can log on to www.davidoyedepoministries.org for live webcasts. For prayers and counseling, please call 017747546. 017747547 or 017747548. Or you can write to PMB. 21688 Ikeja, Lagos, Nigeria. You can also visit www.dominionbooksonline.com for online purchases of over 50 books of anointed materials from Bishop David Oyedepo. Live a victorious life.